Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is John Jake Gaming on the mic here, coming at you with a brand new episode of the Youngstown State Dynasty. We pick things up here with baseball season in full swing over on MVP Baseball 07. It's going to be a good one, man. Make sure you smash that like button. Hit subscribe if you have to be brand new, by the way. And we are going into the month of March. We've got a decent record going for us so far. We're 7 and 8, but we have another tub test for us. Really going to be a brutal month for us, taking on multiple ranked teams. The, uh, uh, yeah, George Washington's ranked, Virginia's ranked. You know, going to go play Rice, they're really good as well. So, definitely some tough games here in the month of March. But this Miami series in particular is going to be really important for us because we do have a level one apparel challenge. Now, what we got to do is we have to make sure that we allow less than 15 runs in our series against the Miami Hurricanes. So, if we can do that, that will help bump our prestige up. Hopefully, pass that one star status. But, yeah, man, it's going to be a really good episode. I hope you guys are excited for it. If you are, make sure you go ahead, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button if you do happen to be brand new. And with that being said, man, I will see you guys on the field. Taking on an A-plus rated Miami Hurricane squad. Let's go ahead and get into it, baby. Go Penguins. All right, boys, so in this battle of David versus Goliath, we are going to be rocking with one of our starting pitchers and John Wilson. He's got a nice little four-pitch set that we can work with, but that being said, we'll go ahead and get this thing underway. First batter of the game, we are gonna got this 2-2 pitch. We were going to try to attack, and oh, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Oh no, we give up a solo shot off rip, man. And that ball was just an absolute no doubter whatsoever, man. So Matt McClintock's batting 415, by the way. He's been a menace all year. He hits a 431 foot bomb. And we are going to be down one to nothing off rip. But we do get out of the rest of his inning as John Wilson does end up getting the last batter of the inning out without hurting himself i feel like every time at least the last time that we had something like that with our pitcher dude ends up fracturing his entire leg so at least we didn't have that we still have our pitcher intact but we gotta find a way to stop this miami offense man i mean they are going to be extremely dangerous we certainly got our hands full man especially when we don't necessarily have the best bats ourselves as we give up another huge hit down into right center field it's not a ground rule double trying to get it in as soon as possible we don't let them get to third base but Miami does end up getting yet another run across and they are just tearing us apart here man <laughs> Like, I, I knew this something like this could have possibly happened. I feel like that Ole Miss game that we played earlier in the season was more of an anomaly. And I think we are certainly seeing that now. But, that being said, we are down 3 to nothing already as we do at least get an out here in center field. Uh, no uh, problems there, but that ball was hit so deep that it was going to indeed end up being a sacrifice fly. And we're not even two winnings into the game yet fully. We end up going ahead and giving up. We're already down four to nothing. We are also have ourselves some runners at the corners too. So this could be some serious trouble here. If we can't get this batter right here out as... Come on, somebody. Brower? Yes, sir. Okay. Whoo, I thought that was going to be really bad. I thought we weren't going to be able to get to it, but... We are down 4 to nothing, and our bats are just continuing to struggle as of right now. As Brower goes the wrong way, he reacts poorly to it, and this could be some trouble. Going for third, can we make a play on the ball? No! And it's five, 6 to nothing, actually. That was a base-clearing triple, man. John Wilson just getting absolutely lit up like a Christmas tree as we find ourselves down 7 to nothing already against one of the best teams in all of college baseball this is definitely one of those games that we circled on the calendar where 
we just went about, you know, we're trying to get a paycheck, man. Uh, our program, our, uh, our athletics program could you could need it. That's why we schedule games like this. You know, it, it happens. And right now, you know, the baseball program, they are certainly being the sacrificial lamb uh, for our athletics department. Like, we're going to get our bag, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're going to get our money, right? But we're not going to look good on the field. We got the host, though. So at least there's that for us. But got runners on second and third base here as looks like the hurricanes are making a substitution because one of their guys did end up getting hurt but i'm tired of john wilson man he's just he's not getting the job done so we are calling in one of our re relievers to see if we can go ahead and try to prevent any more damage from being done a hit out into left field jacob lakefield gets a good beat on it gets the out but we will see yet another sacrifice fly get in. And it's going to be an additional run for Miami. As Miami Hurricanes, their reputation are certainly preceding themselves right now. We're down 7, officially 7 to nothing. As this should be the last out of the inning. And it is. But seriously, man, only two hits this entire game. That's why I haven't really shown any hitting highlights for us. Because we really haven't threatened... Miami in terms of actually getting points on the board um yeah we're uh we're struggling big time right now but hopefully our pitching can be a little bit better can settle down but we got a huge hit out into left right center field and it's gonna be yet another double you cannot make this up right now as they continue to pour it on another hit out in the center field but but Hammond does at least get the out out in center field but it's gonna be you guessed it yet another run as Todd Rogalski comes to the plate two outs runner on first base we try to throw a curveball Jacob Wakefield makes a nice play okay baby down eight to nothing we need to get our bats going eventually but hey it's not it's not happening as of right now as we continue we are still scoreless, man. Like, we, we haven't even scored. Like, it would have been unrealistic for me to say, oh, we're going to beat Miami. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's just, I, that would be an unrealistic thing to say just because they are an A-plus overall squad. We're a D-minus, and I think that might be a tad bit uh, a tad bit of a, uh overstatement. But look at this here. Bohemian makes a play out in center field, and we get him off in position. Let's go, baby got that double play man at least we make one defensive gem we make one good highlight for us here but yeah they, they are just way too good for us we got a lot of work to do if we want to be competitive out on the baseball diamond man what what because what we're doing right now is it's not looking good for our boys you know i'm gonna I'm be honest with you but hey at least we get out of this inning without any more damage being done nice play by goswich as well the, the second baseman coming through and you know taking care of some absolute business but we are also still down nine to nothing now we don't allow anything to be scored in the seventh inning but for our next six at bats we do absolutely nothing as that is going to be yet another home run that we do end up giving up and that's going to make it 11 to nothing bro like what what am i going to do right now man like it's just Yo, this team is just so talented. Mike Vining, man, killing us all day today. Ends up going four for five on the day, batting 429 on the season. And that's going to do it here, man. We actually end up getting run ruled by the Miami Hurricanes. And we do so without even getting any runs. So we lose 11 to nothing. And we only managed to get three hits the entire day. So this was one of those games, man, where everything went right for Miami and nothing came right for us, man. We only got three hits in this one, and our defense definitely did not do any favors whatsoever, man. We gave up 21 hits in 24 rounds, man. We got an absolute crush. I mean, look at this. Miami ended up hitting over 500 today as a team, man. We just simply cannot have that. If you want to be competitive in any game here today, as for your Penguins, man, we only got a few hits. Jacob Wakefield managed to get a hit. Uh, Chamberlain managed to get a hit as well. And then we saw Jacob Langford, another custom player, 
end up with a hit in this one but we really struggled man only three for 25 as a team struck out seven times in this one so i think that was a little bit more than what we ended up accomplishing last time around i think we had less strikeouts this time but it definitely was not as competitive by any stretch of the imagination so that really does put us in a really tough spot for the challenge as we're trying to go about you know making sure that you know we get some apparel so now we gotta get allow free runs or less and we do not accomplish that we do end up scoring runs though we end up score scoring a couple of runs did have an error though but we do end up losing seven to two off of the backs of a free run inning for the Miami Hurricanes man so we end up dropping both games to Miami losing by a combined score of 18 to 2 and we do not get that apparel challenge unfortunately so we're gonna have to maybe wait till later down the line until we can get that kind of stuff for our team so we're going about our business here getting through the month of May and look what ends up happening one of our players, Tommy Moeller, ends up being suspended for eight games due to some bad athletic perf or due to bad, um, bad academic performance, man. But we do end up getting a glove sponsorship challenge in the process. If we commit less than four errors in our March 27th series against Rice, then we might be able to get some loves for the team which that would be really helpful man i think we are capable of doing it i want to say that we can do just that you know as we end up winning as crazy as this is gonna sound you guys we end up winning our first game in the entire month of may it took till the 24th but we end up doing it so we split the spirits against virginia which is really good for us because virginia is a top 10 team but yeah, we'll go ahead, sim through. Well, actually, we'll do a quick sim of the um, of the Rice game real quick. We'll, go, we'll do a quick sim there. And we do end up winning the first one. No errors for us. So, very good start for us. So, we win the first game. Still no errors as of yet. Do we get a little bit more love in that second game? No, we do not. We lose 9-7. to seven, And we do end up committing an error for this one. But... That being said, though, we do at least end up getting some new gloves for the team, man. And that's going to be great for our program. At least getting some better gloves moving forward. But now we finally get ourselves into conference May play. We do make it to the end of the month. And we're not looking good right now. Only winning two games in the entire month. One one against Rice. And then we win another game against Virginia. So that does end up taking us into conference play. Not exactly how I wanted to go into conference play. Definitely kind of limp, kind of just uh, <laughs> limping in there. But we are towards the bottom right now. We are, but that's also because we haven't played any conference games as of yet. We are 9-15 overall. Indiana State is the team we are going to be going up against next. And they are at the bottom of the conference right now. They're 14 and 15 overall. They have a 1 and 5 conference record. Granted, they did end up playing teams like a Wichita State, for example, who are currently leading the way. No one's really dominating the conference from like a win loss perspective. We do have one of the lowest winning percentages in the league, second only to Bradley, who's 7 and 17. So. You know, we, we at least have that going for us, but we are the second to last ranked team in the country. So conference play is going to be extremely important for us here simply because if we don't do what we need to do in conference play, same thing. We won't see any postseason action for us here whatsoever. And we actually got a double header. I want to go straight to the light. So I'm going to quick sim this first game and look what happens in the first game. Chamberlain, our best player on the team. He ends up straining his right rib cage, and he is going to be out for the next two to three weeks. That is going to be a huge loss for us here, man. That is absolutely insane. So we lose that first game by a score of eight to nine. We try to make a rally late. It's got to run in the eighth inning, but we cannot stave off Indiana State, and we do end up losing our conference opener against Indiana State. 
So we'll go ahead and jump into V9 cap as this is indeed a double header here. We were close in that first game, at least in simulation. So, hey, maybe we got a chance to actually go ahead and win a game for us. But Indiana State is going to jump out to at least a 1-0 lead here. We'll see if we can make sure no more runs comes across as our pitcher cannot make a play, unfortunately. And that is going to clear the bases up. And now, all of a sudden, we're down 3 to nothing, man. That is a huge disappointment, man. That is absolutely tough. So we're down 3 to nothing all of a sudden, just trying to get out of this inning. And Bynum will at least make a play in the sense that we were able to get ourselves out of this inning. But not necessarily where we want to be. We are down 3 to nothing already. And like I said, thing that we really need to have is we need to get these bats going. Kimbrel, he might try to help with that. This is a flare out to right field, but that being said, it's actually going to drop. And we do. It took us three games of gameplay to do it, but we finally score. We finally did the thing. We got to run on a board. And we have a chance to tie it as well, but Bynum is going to strike out here, though. Just whiffing on some air. At least he didn't do that window shopping. So now John Wilson, our pitcher, is going to come up to the plate. Still got runners on the corners. And we hit a decent ball. But it looks like this will not be able to drop out into center field. And that is going to actually be the third out of the inning. So we do at least get one run. We do close this gap at least a little bit. But that being said... Still got that 3-1 deficit that we need to overcome. We're certainly not the Cleveland Cavs without our LeBron James of baseball. As we somehow that ball somehow gets through. You hate to see it. That should have been an out, but we can't make a play on that ball, unfortunately. So it's 4 to nothing, And it could have been much worse if that ball was like 5 more feet uh, closer to the wall. You know what I'm saying? Like... That could have been a grand slam. We got very fortunate that we only allowed the one run in that inning. So we're still in striking distance. We got a 4-1 to one lead that we do have to work with. And eventually our guy is going to be done for today. So we're going to call in one of your guys' custom players actually out of the bullpen. Apex Florals, who not only is a backup quarterback for the football team, but he can also do some things on the mound going in in relief we'll see how he fares giving up a double right off the bat almost got that out though we were very close that ball was a little bit more on target by Jacob Wayfield I think that that would have ended the inning that would have ended the inning outright but instead a chance for Indiana State to add some runs and they might have done so because that second that guy on second is just an absolute speedster and there's nothing that we can do. We give up yet another run. 5-1 to one lead. As Apex Boros is trying to get out of this inning. Almost a hit that was going to get something going. But John Langford did get the, uh, the snag. And hey, that's how this thing ends, man. We were more competitive at least this time around. We had twice as many hits as we did in the first game. But we still are going to fall. So 0-2 in conference play. So we do end up playing a little bit better, but we just could not overcome the free runs that Indiana State ended up scoring back in the very first inning of the game. We we did get seven hits. That is a really good sign for us. Matter of fact, Jacob Lakefield ended up going three for five in this one, but outside of our top four hitters. We could not get anything from our batting order, and we need the rest of the lineup to step up if we want to win some of these games. Yo, as a group, like, final five guys batting going, well, what am I looking at? Like, 16, 20, 20, over 23, the last five guys in our lineup, that's not going to work in order to have a stable offense, man. I mean, the pitching was better. We did have that going for us, but it was not enough, and we will go and fall to 0-2 in conference play. So with that being said, we do have one more game in our series against Indiana State, hoping that we can avoid the sweep, and look at this. Our offense actually shows up. We put up 15 runs. 11 of which going in the 6th and 7th inning, and we actually do run rule them. 
so we had a couple of close losses and then we finally explode pause for that last game that we had there man so we at least still end up going winless in conference play so we got that going for us here but we got the rest of conference play man it is still gonna be a long grind to the top i would say as i did not actually mean to do that so that, uh we're gonna i'm gonna let this finish out and then i'll see you guys there but with that being said going into the missouri state series we get a um we got a challenge here for, to hit two doubles in our April 9th series against Missouri State. Now, I feel like we can do it hitting two doubles in three games. I feel like we should be able to go ahead and get that done. But yeah, man, next episode, we will have the month of April. We are currently 10 and 17 as of right now, and we are towards the bottom of our conference. But maybe... We can get ourselves back up here, man. We just got to get ourselves back on the right track. I know we're capable of it. We had a solid February. We just got to come with that energy, man. So with that being said, this is John Chick Gaming on the mic signing off. I'm hoping you're all out there having a good one. Take care, everybody.